So these are the new Marshall Monitor 2 AMC headphones. And overall, I think they're a great pair of headphones. But what I specifically find interesting about these headphones is that they managed to strike a good balance between the old and the new. These headphones have a very classic design to them and they're also very tactile, which I personally really love. But they also have all of the modern conveniences that you would expect from a modern pair of ANC headphones. So the Monitor 2s retail for $320, which I think is fair and they're obviously undercutting popular ANC headphones like the Sony 1000 XM3s and the Bose NC700s. But before we go any farther into this review, I do want to point out that these headphones are geared towards people who prefer neutral sound signature. But regardless, these headphones also fit very well and they're very well built. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. But as always, if you want to pick these headphones up, they'll be linked down below. So first off, let's address these headphones carrying case. Unfortunately, these headphones come included with a carrying pouch, which I think is disappointing because like I've said in the past, any time that you're paying upwards of $300 for any pair of headphones, a hard shell case is to be expected. And I also find it very strange because the $270 Marshall Mid A and C do come with a hard shell case. So if you plan on commuting with these headphones, I would suggest in investing in a hard shell carrying case just to be safe. But when it comes to the build quality and design of these headphones, that's one of the reasons why I like these headphones so much. The outer portion of these headphones have a soft touch feel to them and they're made to look like tumble leather. But it's all artificial, of course. The ear cups swivel freely in any direction. There's a very satisfying and tactile click anytime you extend the headband. And there's also a lot of padding underneath this headband as well. Overall, these headphones are very well built, they feel very durable, and the fact that these headphones are extremely collapsible, I think make them a great option for a constant commuter. But another reason why I think these headphones are great for commuting is because they're extremely low profile. And personally, I love myself a good pair of low profile headphones. And when it comes to fit, these headphones are very comfortable to wear as well. Now, these headphones are definitely big head approved, but the clamping force on these headphones is just firm enough to help them stay in place. But these have the same clamping force as the Sony 1000 XM3s. But what I really like about these headphones is how spacious their ear pads are, all while still maintaining a low profile ear cup design. These headphones should be able to fit in most ear types with zero problems. The only critique I have about these headphones, build quality and fit wise, is that even though the leatherette on these ear pads feel decent, it definitely doesn't feel as good as either of Bose's headphones. But they definitely don't feel as synthetic as Sony's ear pads. And I also gotta point out that these headphones are pretty heavy weighing in at 320 grams, which definitely came to as a surprise to me, given at how minimal these headphones look. Cause for comparison, the Sony's weigh in at 255 grams and the Bose weigh in at 263 grams. Ultimately, this isn't a huge deal, but it is noticeable at first if you're used to using lighter headphones. Now, when it comes to tech specs, one of the biggest upgrades these headphones have is that they now charge via a USB-C port. And when it comes to battery life, these headphones have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with ANC turned on, and these headphones can go for as long as 45 hours with ANC turned off. And for me, I've been able to go a solid two weeks in between charges with these headphones. And these headphones also have these in fast charging, where if you plug them in for 15 minutes from a dead battery, they're going to get you five hours of playback time. But something that I know some people will be asking is that if you can use the USB-C port on these headphones as a wired connection. And unfortunately, you cannot. If you want to use a wired connection with these headphones, you got to use the aux jack. But on the bright side, these headphones actually come with a really good audio cable. Because for comparison, most newer ANC headphones either come with a very cheap audio cable, they don't come with one at all, or some are sold separately, like the Beats Solo Pro. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, these headphones are rocking Bluetooth 5.0, but more importantly, these headphones can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you can easily hot swap from your phone to your computer. 
The only thing that I do want to point out here is that unfortunately these headphones don't have aptX support like the mid ANCs that I mentioned earlier. But more importantly, these headphones are perfectly fine for watching movies or videos on your phone because they have zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or Android device. Now, when it comes to listening to music with these headphones, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these headphones are better suited for people who prefer a neutral sound signature. The mids and highs on these headphones are extremely crisp and the bass on these headphones is very clean. But it's purely the audible kind. So if you're looking for a pair of headphones whose bass is going to rattle your head, then these definitely won't do it for you. Now, even though these headphones do have a fully customizable EQ, even if you were to raise the bass on these headphones all the way up, you're not going to physically feel anything. Now, with that being said, I think these headphones sound best when they're set to their stock EQ. With their stock EQ, these headphones are all about vocalist and clarity. But even though these headphones are all about mids and vocals, the treble on these headphones never get ear piercing, which is good. Now, the soundstage and instrument separation on these headphones is good, but I wouldn't say that they're up there with the Bowers & Wilkins PX7s. I want to say these headphones are more in line with the Bose NC700, but they put more of an emphasis on the vocals than the Bose do. But something that I do want to point out about these headphones is that they get way louder than average. But even at those louder volumes, these headphones don't suffer from any noticeable distortion. But personally for me, I try to keep these headphones below 90% volume. Now, like I mentioned earlier, these headphones do have an adjustable EQ, and you can also cycle between your preset EQs by pressing the M button on the right ear cup. The only thing that I do wish these headphones would do is say which EQ you're set to. Say Marshall, say Rock, and say Spoken, instead of just playing a tone. But also, if you don't want to ever cycle between your EQ settings, you can always remap the M button to be a Google Assistant button. So you can more quickly and more efficiently talk to your voice assistant, similar to what you can do with the Sony 1000 XM3s. But this now leads us to the control knob on these headphones. Unlike a lot of newer headphones that are using touchpads, Marshall is sticking to having physical buttons. And I think that's perfectly okay, because some people still prefer physical buttons, and for some people, it could even be a deciding factor. So with all that being said, controlling your music on these headphones is very accurate and direct. And yes, it is easier than using a touchpad. Now, when it comes to active noise cancellation on these headphones, it's okay, but I do feel it's kind of dated by today's standards. They block out a decent amount of noise for $320 headphones, but they definitely aren't in the top echelon. But so that you can see for yourself, we're gonna jump into an ANC test. So, like you may have just seen, these headphones block out a decent amount of noise, but my biggest critique about them is that they do have a considerable amount of cabin pressure if the ANC on these headphones is working hard. I find myself having to pop my ears from time to time, and you can really feel that cabin pressure if you're not playing any music, or if you're just watching a movie or listening to a podcast with these headphones while you're in a louder environment. But if you're in a quieter environment, the cabin pressure isn't as significant, but you can definitely still feel a little something something. So for that reason, I only like to use the ANC on these headphones when I have to. 
But on the bright side, the ANC on these headphones doesn't change how they sound. Next up, there's the ambient mode on these headphones, and overall, I think it performs much better than the ANC on these headphones. It sounds natural, so things aren't over amplified, and there's also no hissing in the background. You can also adjust how much ambient sound you want to let in, and even if you have it set to 100%, they still don't develop a hissing in the background, which is also good, because this is still a common problem for a lot of other headphones out there with an ambient mode. And the ambient mode on these headphones also do a very good job of rejecting wind noise when walking outdoors thanks to their microphone placement. The only thing that's keeping the ambient mode on these headphones from being perfect is that they don't block out sudden spikes of loud noises like the Sony 1000 XM3s do. These headphones let in everything. But also, these headphones have a conversation mode where if you press on their ANC button once, these headphones will pause your music and let in all of the ambient sound. So you can quickly talk to someone without having to take your headphones off like this. And then, when you press on this button again, these headphones will go back to normal. And finally, here's the microphone test. And I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised. The microphone on these headphones sounds very clear, and I do think these headphones are up there with the Bose NC700. So, overall, I think the Marshall Monitor 2 ANC are a decent pair of ANC headphones, but specifically for people who prefer a neutral sound signature. Even though the audible bass on these headphones sounds great, you don't physically feel anything. But the clarity and vocals on these headphones is superb. Even though the active noise cancellation on these headphones isn't perfect, specifically because of the cabin pressure, it's definitely still usable and can help if you're in a noisy environment. But I really think these headphones are great for commuting because they have a really good performing ambient mode, they're durable, they're comfortable, I really love their low profile design, and they're very compact when collapsed. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any of the products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.